songs and uh, um, here we go, I'll put that right there and one of my favorite songs above all and things. And so thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Jordan was going to do some music for us tonight, but um, she had an extra hour or so of work to do, so she uh, called the one and said, I'm not making it. So, but I thank you so much uh, to be able to have a partner like Jenny and um, my wife in, uh, in ministry to, uh, that they will sing and take care of us, and also at times like this, and, and, and also, okay. And uh, yeah, that's just a little buzz. We, we, uh, we, so we, we got sailing duty, we got camera duty, uh, we got preaching, singing duty, and so, um, uh, you know, we're pulling out all the hats tonight for sure, right? Okay, uh, it's good to see you. Let me start out with um, you who are watching live right now, uh, and you who will be catching uh, on the playback in a little bit. Uh, Billy Graham, uh, our neighbor, our church member here at Old St. George Baptist Church, uh, Billy Graham passed away on this past Sunday, uh, and uh, his funeral uh, is a graveside funeral at 11 o'clock here at Old St. George Baptist Church. It's going to be a graveside. Um, and uh, they will be receiving family and friends and, at the home, but um, they will have a little time of gathering together. Uh, I think about 10 o'clock is what they're going to be doing. And so uh, you want to make sure uh, that you are ministering to that family and praying for Sue and Tag and Hamp and uh, Robin and the rest of the family as they uh, lay Mr. Billy to rest, okay? And so uh, thank you so much for doing that. Um, Jennifer Proctor has uh, been moved to... Um, to therapy and uh, rehab, and so we want to be praying for her. There are others that uh, are still recovering, others who have been to the doctor and having test run and so forth, and we want to remember them. Uh, kids are back at school, uh, not only college kids, uh, but also our uh, some of our um, uh, local uh, school kids are, others are waiting to have another week or so to wait to begin, and we want to be praying for them. We uh, bless them on this past Sunday, and uh, and, and uh, let me thank you, old St. George Baptist Church. Let, let me just thank you. Uh, you know, I, I love you so much, and I love the way you give, and the many of you gave uh, hand sanitizers so that we can bless our uh, school children with hand sanitizers, and uh, we were able to give all of our kids uh, two bottles, one through ten, okay? And uh, Jenny and I have been out uh, running, and uh, those who were not here Sunday, we've been trying to drop by the house and uh, leave them some. Um, if there's a dog in there, um, I'm not leaving it on the door, uh, nor did I want him or her to leave something on me, okay? And so um, so, uh, so we get out and we drive up and we go, toot, 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 we're going to toot on the horn. If nobody comes, um, I'm, I, um, and, and as a dog, um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, okay? And we'll catch it later. Um, but thank you so much for giving and uh, blessing. We have counted, uh, Jenny, if I remember correctly, 30 uh, between a K-5 and 12th grade. That's not counting college kids, okay? 30, listen, 30, 3-0 between K-5 and, and 12th grade that, that come regularly to Old St. George Baptist Church. Now, during the pandemic, uh, we haven't seen some of them, and uh, but uh, but when we are in, in regular church, um, you know, there are 30 of them uh Eight, the, those age groups that burn right here. So uh, I'm just saying that because I, I was amazed at that. So you want to praise God for that and, uh, and, and all. I want to, um, just one last thing, and then we're going to get into Revelation chapter 22, okay? Revelation chapter 22. Um, some of you can see this right now on there. And uh, uh, what you do best in the body of Christ is the book that Jenny and I will be teaching for Sunday school uh, beginning in a couple of weeks. And uh, you can go to Bruce the Bugbee, B-U-G-B-E-E. Bug and then B, okay? Bug B. And uh, BruceBugB.com, and you can order one for yourself. Um, we're going to order some here at the church, probably about 25 copies. And if you want a copy, uh, we want you to get one, okay? Uh, talk to Tony today, our Sunday school uh, uh, director, and he said, let's take it out of the Sunday school stuff. So if you're giving me money, well, guess what? You get money back. How often do we get back money, right? And uh, so we're going to give you money back. And, um, I know, but you go, I, I promise you, this, this is a revolutionary, changing book, okay? And so you want to make sure you get you a copy of that. Uh, what you do best in the body of Christ, if you want to look on Amazon, try to find it, that's great. Uh, if not, uh, the church will give, uh, give those who are here, and you can get one that way. Um, Sunday is, I, I proclaimed it uh, the last week or so, Sunday is Join the Church Sunday. And we're going to be looking at um, Acts chapter 2. And I'm uh, going we'll to talk about what is a church and why you should join. And so some of you have already been talking to me. I'm looking forward to uh, many folks joining the church Sunday morning. And, uh, and so you want to do that. We also have deacon election. We have one more deacon to elect. 
and, uh, and so because of our Constitution and bylaws, when somebody turns down, if it's not a certain percentage anyway, there's a procedure you've got to go through. And so we're doing that procedure. And so Anthony McElhaney and David Barry have already been elected, so we have to elect one more. I'm going to be you next Sunday morning, okay, when I serve this, okay? Talk to God. God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for watching over and protecting us. Father, like you rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall for us. But Father, what the devils thought were a, was a great victory became great defeat for them because you tell us in Colossians that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead, he made a public spectacle of the devils and the demons and the, and the forces of hell. Thank you for that. The, 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 the gods and the demons and the, and the workers of darkness, you made a public spectacle of them. And Father, we, can, we don't fight for victory. We fight because we have victory through Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. Father, as we uh, study tonight, I pray, Father, to guide my words. Father, you've been guiding my thinking and studying time and preparing for now. And so, Father, may it all come to fruition. And Father, to have touched us and heal us. And then, Father, teach us so that we can go out and be what you need us to be. Be with us as we begin a new study uh, over the next few weeks. So be with us as we elect uh, a new deacon uh, this coming week. And then, Father, that in the name of Jesus, Everything that we say, everything we do, we glorify in you. And thank you for those who will be moving their membership and joining our church, whether it's transfer of letter, whether it's profession of faith Sunday morning, Father. Looking forward to a great time Sunday morning celebrating in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Revelation chapter 22. Um, we are at the end of the of the, the book of Revelation, okay? And, uh, and so many of you have been faithfully watching, and uh, thank you so much uh, for doing that. And uh, faithfully watching and tuning in and uh, worshiping on Wednesday nights as to do that. Now, this is the last chapter of the book of Revelation. Now, just a couple things real quick. Uh, the theme of Revelation, remember I told you at the very beginning when we started the book, uh, that this is the promise of the hope of glory. The promise of the hope of glory. All of God's promises for us as believers come into fruition. And all the promises for those workers of iniquity come to fruition. Because he says, if you don't turn... That was me. Uh, if you don't turn, uh, then uh, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And that happens. Uh, if you walk faithfully and endure to the end, there is a place prepared for you. And there is there is that promise there. And, uh, and it comes to a fruition as well. So the thing is the promise of the hope of glory. Now just to remember something. Uh, who was this revelation given to? Now some of you said right off. John. Now, if you it were in the early studies, you know that is not correct. The, Reve the book of Revelation was not given to John. In fact, it says in, 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 in Revelation chapter 1 that it was given to Jesus, not to John. Okay? And God the Father gave it to Jesus the Son, who shared it with John the disciple, who shares it with us, being written down. As we'll see tonight, uh, the angel told him, do not seal up the, the prophecies of this book. Now, the angel told Daniel, back in the book of Daniel, don't, don't let people know this. Seal it up, because they don't need to know it yet. Why? Because that was not for his time yet. Now, when John is being told, write and, 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 and broadcast it, so to speak, it was because it's applicable for his day and his time and for us, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. The book of Revelation early in reveals Jesus' identity and God's plan for the end of the world. Uh, the focus is on Jesus. It's on his second coming, his victory over evil, and the establishment of the kingdom of God. And as we come to this last chapter, you want to keep in mind that this is only the beginning of the ending, which is just a beginning. Okay? Let me say that again. That's a tongue tangle over. Okay? This is only the beginning of the ending, which is just a beginning. Don't ask me to say it three times, okay? And so, uh, chapter 22 is just like chapter 21. It's one of those easy to uh, read through, uh, not a lot of explanation needed there. And so, uh, I'll just offer a few explanations of uh, a few verses that I think needs to have some attention drawn to it. And uh, then we're going to read through the chapter. And I'm going to read it from the contemporary English version simply because, again, sometimes we read our, our regular translation that we like. And uh, we skip over some things, we miss things because we read it regularly. And so I'm going to read from the contemporary English translation, and, and it just opens up some things for us, okay? And, uh, and then after we read through the chapter, uh, I'm going to offer a few concluding remarks, okay? 
And so, um, what resources did I use? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Okay, the Outline Bible, you hear me use that often. I, I love the Outline Bible, and uh, it helps me a lot of times to sort of make some sense of some things. And, um, you know, the Life Application Bible Commentary, the Life Application Bible Commentary, that, if, if, you, if you're looking for a good study Bible and a good um, uh, commentary, uh, let me challenge you uh, to recommend that you get the Life Application Study Bible, and it'll come with the Life Application Bible Commentary with it, okay? Uh, I love that. A lot of times when I'm preaching and teaching, I pull in some of that uh, material and because it's so good for us, okay? Um, I also knew Warren Wearsby. Warren Wearsby passed away about a year ago, um, one of our great Southern Baptist uh, theologians. Um, and, and I knew some of his uh, with, with the World, I'm sorry, with the Word Bible Commentary. With the Word Bible Commentary. And um, I, I used Volume 4 of Unlocking the Bible Story by Colin Smith. I've had that. Uh, there, there's four volumes of that, and uh, it's a good uh, little, uh, little good um, commentary, um, teaching books, and uh, called Unlocking the Bible Story. And uh, they're probably still available if you want to invest a little bit of dollars and some things you can find that. Okay? Now, chapter 21. Chapter 21 is the glorious ending. Okay? As we saw there, there was a glorious ending. In fact, verses 1 through 5 of uh, chapter 22 really belongs back in chapter 21, but there is included here in chapter 22, and we'll look at that in just a moment. Chapter 22, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 22 it, it is one last appeal to turn from your sinful ways. One last appeal to turn from your sinful ways, okay? In verses 1 through 5, uh, we're going to see the city of God, and it's going to have a river of life that's going down Main Street, and on both sides of that will be a tree of life, and, and each one of these trees is going to be producing a, a different fruit. It's going to produce 12 different fruit, uh, one of these uh, e each month, okay? And it's constantly going to be um, growing and constantly be producing, and, uh, and so uh, you're going to see that as we read through here. And also in verses 1 through 5, John's seeing the throne of God again, okay? And uh, God is um, among the people and, uh, and, and, and uh, walking among his people. Um, and we're also told we're going to see Jesus and we're going to see God face to face. Now, notice verse 3 and verse 4. Verse 3 says, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. That word curse in verse 3 comes from the word that means uh, a thing that has been devoted to God without any hope of ever being redeemed, it will be slain. And it's often used in reference to an animal that is offered for sacrifice. And, uh, and so no more is there a curse. Uh, no more are we going to bear the curse of our sin. Why? Because Jesus has done that. If you are in 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 that streets, uh, walking those streets of gold with that river and those trees and everything, that curse on you has been removed simply because you have made a personal, conscious decision to say, God, I'm a sinner. I don't live like you do. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I call upon you, save me, and you committed your life to Jesus Christ, and you've been faithful to the end, okay? But that word curse also is referred oftentimes to a person or a thing that has been doomed to destruction. Now, there's no more curse here. Why? Wow. Because everything that was doomed to destruction has already been thrown into the lake of fire. And so, uh, so you, there's no more curse. It says also in verse 3 that the throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. Uh, this word serve, uh, when, you, when we, you hear serve and I hear serve, you don't think tennis serving back and forth. A lot of times we think serving like, hey, I got, I'm a waiter and I come out and I've got to serve somebody and kind of give you food to do this. This, is better, this word is better understood as that we will worship the Lord forever and forever, okay? Um, the word actually means to offer gifts unto one who is worthy of worship. The word is used uh, for serving. Uh, the word used for serve here is usually used in worshiping God by observing, by observing the rites that, that have been instituted by Him to worship Him in His glory. And so we will be worshiping him as he has already prescribed and wants us to, okay? And so we will do that. Verse 4, it says, And they will see his face, and his name will be in their foreheads. Now we understand the name on the foreheads. Back about chapter uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, so it's in there. Remember, God put a stamp on all the believers' head, and the devil comes along later on with the false prophet and the beast and uh, they and Antichrist, and they stamp all their people's heads and, and, and in mockery of God. And so, but I want to deal with this part about they will see his face. Up until 
spiritual disciple. Listen to me very carefully. Up until this time, the only people who had ever seen God face to face and never died were who? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Okay. Jenny's about to try to tell me something. She'll oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong. You know, I get that. I know. Right. Okay. So Adam and Eve were the only people who saw uh, the face of God until now. Now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy and, and Exodus and, and, and so forth that Moses would meet with God as a friend meets with a friend face to face. But Moses was not permitted to see the face of God. In fact, he said, God, show me your glory. You know, but let me see your face. And, uh, and, and God said, you can't do it. In fact, listen to what he says in Exodus 33, verse 20. You may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. And so what God did, instead of showing him his face, he showed him his backside. That's all he could see. And that was enough for him, okay? And, and, uh, and so, um, so, so why can they see the face of God now and live? That's a good question. Anybody want to ask that question? Go ahead, Jenny. Raise your hand again. Why can't they see the face of God? Because I, I know if we got home, she would, be, she would be asking that question. And so let me go ahead and answer it. They are no longer in their sinful state. They now have their eternal bodies, which is immortal. The mortal has now put on immortality, and, and, and now they are not in a sinful state anymore. They are now in the glorified holy state. Remember in, in, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, it says that God has come to make his home among his people. And, and that's what uh, this verse is also referring to, that God has now made his home among his people. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, John writing this later on, he says this, Dear friend, we are already God's children, but he has not shown us what, will be, what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Really is. Amen. I tell you what, man, if I was if I was a parish man, man, I'd be swimming for the channel in about right now, okay? And and uh, so um so they're in the glorified bodies and and never be afraid. You're gonna see the face of God and you're not gonna die. Okay, hallelujah. Uh, when John hears Jesus saying he is coming again, he falls down, boom, he falls down to his face to the ground, worshiping the company angel who reaches over and says, God, boy, get up from there. He's again rebuked immediately for doing so, okay? And uh, in fact, that's what happens down about verse 8. In verse 11, verse 11 can be uncanny, and it can be a difficult verse to understand. So uh, let, let's, let, let's help here in just a moment, okay? It says, and, and here's what the angel says, beginning back in verse 10. Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Uh, let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right, and let him who is holy continue to be holy. That's funny sounding, do it? Man, it's like, what? Simply put, what the angel is simply saying here, you're going to be known by your fruits. You're going to be known by your fruits. This verse is describing life before the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem arrive, okay? The angel is not recommending that people go out and do evil or live in sin. What the angel is doing, he is simply reminding us as people and reminding us that people will continue in their sin right up until the day of the Lord's return. Remember, even during the place that we've already looked at in, Re in Revelation, during those plagues and during those judgments being poured out, remember what the people were doing? They were cursing God and they were continuing living as they desired. Verse 10, along with this, uh, it is an appeal to leave your sinfulness and follow God. See, the angel is simply saying that your actions have consequences. When Christ returns, the opportunity to repent is gone, and you will reap the consequences of your actions. When we read through this in a moment in the contemporary English version, I want your ears to perk up at verse 10 and 11. I will try to remember uh, to say, listen here, okay? I will try to do that, okay? And so um, you want to do that. Um, verse 19 is, a, uh, is a, um, another verse that I want you to look at for just one moment, and then we're going to look at read through Revelation chapter 22, the contemporary English version. Verse 19, and if anyone takes away from this book of prophecy, now some people say, what book? Some people say that refers to the whole Bible. 
In this instance, the way he's writing it, it really refers to Revelation, but it's applicable to the whole Bible, okay? And so, because he says this book of prophecy. But again, uh, God says that in other places and uh, reminds us that because whatever God says is true and holy and we are to follow it, okay? And so, uh, he says, if anyone takes away, takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. Okay? And so, uh, that word take away, or takes away, means to deny. So, those people who deny the word of God, God says, I'm going to take your name out of the book. Those who ignore, and because they don't live their own way, I'm going to take your name out of the book. Those who distort the truth, of God's word, he takes their name out of the book. Why? Because they're not his. They're not spirit-filled. Because the spirit-filled Christian, the spirit-filled person, listen, will only, listen, will only, 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 say it with me, will only speak what? He will only speak truth. Why? Because if you are filled with the spirit of God, you cannot tell a lie. Okay? So let's read uh, chapter 22 from the contemporary English version. And I have copied and put it in my notes here. Uh, let me remind you real quick. Uh, some, every now and then I get, get, get an email, James, I like to have the teaching notes. Um, after I get finished with all this, I'm going to look at all my teaching notes and, and, and see about putting them together. And if you want my teaching notes, I will make those available to you. And, and it's probably just a little small cost to, to get those uh, because they'll be bound up and printed and things like that so that you can have and uh, um, to, to study by it and go back and look at it, okay? Um, so let's read chapter 22. The angel showed me a river that was crystal clear, and its waters gave life. The river came from the throne where God and the Lamb were seated. Then it flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river are trees that grow a different kind of fruit each month of the year. The fruit gives life, and the leaves are used as medicine to heal the nations. God's curse will no longer be on the people of that city. He and the Lamb will be seated there on their thrones, and His people will worship God and will see Him face to face. God's name will be written on the foreheads of the people. Never again will night appear, and no one who lives there will ever need a lamp or the sun. The Lord will be their light, and they will rule forever. Verse 6. Then I was told, these words are true and can be trusted. The Lord God controls the spirits of his prophets, and he is the one who sent his angel to show his servants what must happen right away. Remember, I am coming soon. God will bless everyone who pays attention to the message of this book. My name is John, and I am the one who heard and saw these things. Then after I had heard and seen all this, I knelt down and began to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown it to me. But the angel said, don't do that. I am a servant just like you. I am the same as a follower or a prophet or anyone else who obeys what is written in this book. God is the one you should worship. Now here's verse 10 and 11. I told you I'm trying to remember verse 10 and 11. Don't keep the prophecies in this book a secret. These things will happen soon. Verse 11. Evil people will keep on being evil. And everyone who is dirty-minded will still be dirty-minded. But good people will keep on doing right. And God's people will always be holy. Now, didn't that make a whole lot more sense? Okay. Verse 12. Then I was told, I am coming soon. And when I come, I will reward everyone for what they have done. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. God will bless all who have washed their robes. They will each have the right to eat fruit from the tree that gives life, and they can enter the gates of the city. But outside the city will be dogs, witches, immoral people, murderers, idol worshipers. And everyone who loves to tell lies and do wrong. I am Jesus, and I am the one who sent my angel to tell all of you these things for the churches. I am David's great descendant, and I am also the bright morning star. The, bride, the spirit and the bride say, come. Everyone who, everyone who hears this should say, come. 
If you are thirsty, come. If you want life-giving water, come and take it. It's free. Here's my warning for everyone who hears the prophecies in this book. If you add anything to them, God will make you suffer all the terrible troubles written in this book. If you take any away from these prophecies, God will not let you have a part in the life-giving tree and in the holy city described in this book. The one who has spoken these things says, come. I'm sorry. The one who has spoken these things says, I am coming soon. So, Lord Jesus, please come soon. I pray that the Lord will be kind to all of you. Amen and amen. Back in verse 14, he said, Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and go through the gates into the city. Bless, uh, God will bless all who have washed their robes. They will each have the right to the fruit from the tree that gives life, and they can enter the gates of the city. Those who once have been sinful are now redeemed by the blood of Christ. And this is a reference to them. Remember I told you early in uh, tonight that this um, chapter 22 is a final appeal of salvation. And that really is what he's reminding them. That once we are sinful, um, and we, because we, we, once we are sinful, we have been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and we have, so to speak, white robes, okay? And, uh, and uh, now, we, 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 what, what's he getting at is we don't need to be saved over and over and over and over again. But what we do need to do before we die and go into eternity, we have to continually wash our robes to remain clean and ready this side of eternity. Remember, this is an appeal to those who are not on the Lord's side. Wash your robes. Because it's saying those who have their robes washed will get to go in. But if you don't have your robes washed, you're not getting in. And it's an appeal. Get ready. Let me, let me use some... Uh, some words from Warren Wiersbe um, uh, in his uh, commentary with the word Bible commentary uh, as, he, um, uh, as we draw close tonight, okay? And I'm going to just kind of read some things that I wrote here uh, and I just copy from him because it makes sense for us. Are you treasuring God's word and are you obeying it? See, this is his message to you and, you mu and it must not be altered. There is a special blessing for being obedient to God and His Word. Are you doing the work He has called you to do? See, God promises to reward faithful servants. Do you really want Jesus to return today? As Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy, do you love His appearing? If Jesus were to come today, would you be disappointed and would your plans be upset? Are you urging lost sinners to trust him and be ready for his coming? See, God has said it to keep it, but I say it to share. The Holy Spirit works through the church to bring lost people to the Savior. The people that were described in Chapter 21, verse 8, which says, The cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual, immoral, immoral, and those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning supper. This is the second death. And also in uh, chapter 22, verse 11, where he says, let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to be right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Listen, um, the people that are described in there, they can be saved. In fact, Paul writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he talks about some of those same issues. Some of you were drunkers, some of you were the doctors, some of you were liars, some of you were just trying to get into heaven by being good, some of you were vile, some of you were murdered. <coughs> And on and on he goes, and he says, that's what you were before Christ saved you from your sin. And so you can be saved out of that. You can be living into that, but Christ can save you. But you've got to make a personal, constant decision. I want Jesus, Lord, and I want my sin. And Warren Wiersbe goes on, he says, you've got to become, you 
or, or the people describe them, verses 21 and, and 22, 11, can you say, and become new creatures, ready for the new heaven and the earth. Will you tell them, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, says anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. We've got to tell them that, okay? And in the book, Unlocking the Bible Story, Colin Smith hints a little prayer there as he was teaching on this, and I like the prayer. I, I didn't think I could say any better. So I'm going to just use it as we come to a close tonight, okay? So will you pray with me? Gracious Lord and Savior, I come to receive by faith what you offer to me in Jesus Christ. I ask that you make me a citizen of your kingdom and that one day Christ will lead me into the place he is preparing for all of his people. Thank you that this is his promise for all who believe and therefore that it is his promise to me. Help me to live for your glory until that day dawns. In Jesus' name, amen.